Right now at Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory, save 50 to 70% off everything in stores and online. That's right, 50 to 70% off everything. Celebrate the 4th with dresses from $19.99 at Banana Republic Factory. And at Gap Factory stores, tees start at $4.99. Plus, save an extra 40% off clearance. Sale ends Tuesday. Search our store locator for your nearest Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory store or shop us online. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, this is Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome to No BS Hiring Advice on blogtalkradio.com. You know, when I was growing up, uh, I grew up in New York in the borough known, known as the Bronx. And as someone who grew up in the Bronx on 167th Street in the Grand Concourse, I was but a few blocks away from the old Yankee Stadium. And I played Little League Baseball at the site of what is now the new Yankee Stadium. So I had a special affinity for the Yankees. Playing Little League ball on that field, uh, I remember times where Mickey Mantle would come back from an injury uh, and you would hear the sound of the crowd uh, explode with excitement uh, at some point in our game, but late enough that you knew it was later on in the game. And we would all smile to ourselves saying that, well, I guess the Mick came through as a pitch hitter. And he had. Now let's fast forward past the Steinbrenner years, or actually into the Steinbrenner years. And we've had a series of ball players come up through the Yankee minor league system. I'll refer to them as the core four plus one. And we're going to look at how the Yankees handle these ball players uh, to hold them on to, onto their team. And I think there are lessons that can be learned from what the Yankees did with, I'm going to start with the core four, Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, Mariano Rivera, Derek Jeter, plus one, Bernie Williams, uh, to keep them on the team and valuable for as long as they did. So before I go into the details of the show, I just want to say that this episode is brought to you by two sponsors. The first one is ConsultingAssignments.com, which is a site where you can find and fill consulting assignments, full-time consulting positions, temp, temp to perm, and contract hire opportunities anywhere in the world completely free. Posting a job, posting a resume is free. Searching jobs and resumes is also free, as is the ability to contact one another. The only thing the site charges for is if you want to feature a job or a resume. It is a whopping $10 for 30 days, with prices declining the more jobs that you pre-purchase. They get it down to, well, you'll find out if you go to the site. So again, consultingassignments.com. The second site is uh, Audible. Now, if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash the big game hunter and sign up for a 30 day trial of Audible, you'll be able to download a free book, a free audio book as part of the trial. And I know you like audio, you're listening to my podcast, right? So enjoy other things, enjoy books through Audible, and specifically go to audibletrial.com forward slash the big game hunter. So where I last left you, I was talking about um, the core four plus Bernie Williams. And I think there's some wonderful lessons about staff retention from their stories. Now, let me start off with Williams, uh, who was a minor leaguer at the time that the Yankees had a center fielder named Roberto Kelly uh, playing for the team. Now, Kelly was a good ball player for them in, in his early career, batted 270, 280 at a time where that was a good average. It was before the steroid era. And, you know, it was playing well for them, adequate defensively. And the Yankees saw something in Williams. They, they thought he might be able to become that kind of a hitter as well, um, but they also saw that he was a better defensive player. So what the Yankees did is trade uh, Kelly for as part of a deal where they got Paul O'Neill, 
who became a staple in right field and promoted uh, Bernie Williams to center. Now, the lesson here is the importance of making room for talent in an organization. Now, I'm, I'm a baby boomer. I'm in my 60s now. Yet I look at so many of my generation blocking the path of, of people who are coming up the ranks. They're not training or coaching them, and we'll get to that a little bit later in the Yankee story. And they're holding down a job, and they're doing well. But there's no mentoring going on. There's no space being made for the young to enter the workforce. The Yankees made space. They got something good from from making the trade, but they made space for a young ball player. Where can you be making space? Where can you be taking someone and not pushing them out the door, but making room for a new person while at the same time transferring someone to a different part of your organization that they might enjoy as well, but one where they're not quite indispensable. You know what I mean? That role that they've done for the last 10, 15, 5 years uh, that they do very well. But you know what happens when you do the same thing repetitively? You get stale. So the Yankees made room for Williams, uh, who they judged to be a better ball player, uh, by getting rid of someone else on their team and making room for them. Here's another wonderful example from uh, our recent retiree, Derek Jeter. Now, go back to, I believe it's 1996, where uh, Joe Torre is a first-time Yankee manager, uh, not well regarded as a manager yet. Uh, after all, he'd been fired from previous jobs, and his teams had not done particularly well. Um, and you know, they had a, a mediocre shortstop uh, playing the field, and they decided to give Jeter a chance at short. Now, Coaches looked at Jeter, and they said, he's an adequate at best defensive player. We don't know if he'll ever get any better. And he's a singles hitter. He's not going to hit a lot of home runs. That wound up being absolutely true. As was the part about him being an adequate defensive player at best. The Yankees were at a point where they were considering a trade for a starting pitcher. Uh, they were considering trading one of their minor league starting pitchers for a shortstop named Felix Fermin. That minor league starting pitcher, by the way, was Mariano Rivera, who almost was traded to Seattle for a ball player who lasted a few more seasons in the majors. Obviously, is not a potential Hall of Famer as Jeter is. But what happened was management went to bat with the front office for Jeter. They said, we see something in him that you can't quantify. There's a determination and fire and a grace about him that no other ball player we've seen in this generation has. Let's give him a chance. At worst, we can always go back and get another player to play short later on. But let's give him a chance. Uh, he'll probably start off at the same place as Fermin, but he has an upside to him. Now, let's fast forward years later. Five World Series championships, another appearance as well in 2001 where they didn't win it. Um, Jeter, clearly a backbone of the Yankee organization, growing up to become captain of the team because of the values that he represented through his conduct. You know, he's a ball player that you never heard scandal about in an age where scandal was so prevalent. You know, never, ever an iota of an issue with him. And what the difference here is management went to bat for someone. And it was the young ball player, and they said, we can always adjust later on, but let's give him a chance. How many people do you give chances to? Again, part of the idea of making space for, for someone young comes in the Derek Jeter story. And his fire and his determination when important games were on the line um, were legion. Uh, was he a perfect ball player? No, but he was a really good ball player. Mariano Rivera, you know, the uh, all-time saves leader in Major League Baseball. And this is also true of Jeter as well. They were never the highest paid players at their position. But through the treatment that they received by management, they engendered loyalty uh, or management fostered loyalty 
uh, in these players. So at the time that Alex Rodriguez signed the $25 million deal with Texas, Jeter went to management. He said very simply, I want to be paid fairly given the market. I'm not asking for the most money. I'm asking to be paid fairly. It's time to increase my salary. How many of you ordinarily would do that for people uh, where someone goes to you and, without a, a gun put to your head uh, and increase their salary to market rate? Uh, very unlikely. In Rivera's case, the best closer in the history of the game never was paid the most dollars for his position. He was always treated top of the line, but he loved being a Yankee, so the Yankees treated him in a particular way uh, that allowed him to be compensated well. He'll be coming back just like he did this year to spring training, just like I'm sure Jeter will and Pettit and all the rest of them will. Uh, but when all is said and done, uh, two beloved figures in the organization treated well, not at the highest rate, but compensated fairly. How many of you do that? How many of you force your employees to go out and change jobs and then suddenly rush back and go, oh, oh we'll give you a counteroffer. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Why aren't you proactive? Because you have policies. The policies are wrong. Change the policies. Do things differently. And suddenly you have loyal employees. Uh, Posada. Posada, when he came to the Yankees, was a minor league ball player. Uh, the first level catcher was the man who eventually became manager of the team, Joe Girardi. And Joe functioned as a coach mentor for Posada uh, in his first uh, his, his uh, initial season with the Yankees and helped Posada become from an atrocious defensive player to a marginally adequate one uh, on the team and was always a very good hitter for his position. How many of you have coaches and mentors for your young talent uh, to teach them the rules of the road, uh, to mentor them and help support them getting ahead, integrate them into your organization? Like we have new hires. Do you have mentors assigned to them to, uh, that they can puppy dog with? Uh, or are they just left to figure it out on, your, on their own? Now, you can do it that way like you always have, but lo and behold, when you take a young person and mentor them, when you take a veteran employee and mentor them into the ways that your organization operates, a lot of good comes from it. Here's the final example I'll give you, Andy Pettit. Uh, Pettit, Yankee through and through, but there was a stage in life where he said, I want to be home with the kids. So he left the pitch in Houston with Roger Clemens, another Yankee pitcher. Uh, they both went off to Houston. They had excellent careers there. But there was a point where Pettit's kids were, were more grown, and he decided that if he was going to keep pitching, he wanted to pitch for the Yankees. Now, this is the idea of having people leave with good reasons and keeping the door open for them to come back. Many firms I know don't do that. They say you can come back, but once you're out the door, they're done with you. They don't want anything to do with you. Um, not the case with the Yankees. There were guys with character and with questionable character. I'm, I'm putting Clemens in that category because although uh, he's been acquitted, there's enough. There's plenty of it, uh, of. Uh, comments to suggest he was a steroid user uh, while on the team. But the Yankees kept the door open for two talents to consider returning. They didn't burn bridges. They always maintained cordial relationships. The fans may have gone crazy at their departure, but the Yankees respected the decision, didn't necessarily like it, but respected it and maintained the relationship that allowed them to cope, come back. You can get excellent talent if you don't burn your bridges. So those are a couple of the thoughts I had uh, about the Yankees and how they can, some of their conduct affects staff retention. And I just want to simply say, I've been a search professional for more than 40 years. I love to help you firm staff positions. Uh, I fill positions in 49 out of 50 states plus areas of Canada. Uh, if you'd like my assistance, reach out to me at Jeff Altman at TheBigGameHunter.us. That's J-E-F-F. -F. Now look, my name over there, 
Jeff Altman, all one word, at TheBigGameHunter.us. Reach out to me. I'd love to help you firm staff positions. If we're not already connected on LinkedIn, send me a connection request at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. I accept connection requests from people worldwide as long as you're not in the country known for scams or spam or as long as you're not a third recruiter. So this is Jeff Alpin. Hope you found today's show helpful. I'll be back next time with more no BS hiring advice. Take care. Have a great day. You're a business owner. Check. You have business owner's insurance. Check. And 10 years ago, that went about enough. Today, small businesses are being targeted and taken down by hackers. Medical offices, consultants, CPAs, any business that's built success has everything to lose. You probably have cybersecurity installed on your computer. Check. But you probably don't have cyber insurance. Coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised. Cyber policy covers that gap. CyberPolicy.com shops the leading cyber insurers to find you the right policy at the right price to avoid a catastrophe. Coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised. Get a custom quote today in just four minutes. And for a limited time, use the promo code BLOGTALK to get Norton's small business protection for up to five devices. Free when you sign up for cyber insurance. Plan. Prevent. Insure. Visit CyberPolicy.com. That's CyberPolicy.com. Right now at Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory, save 50 to 70% off everything in stores and online. That's right, 50 to 70% off everything. Celebrate the 4th with dresses from $19.99 at Banana Republic Factory. And at Gap Factory stores, tees start at $4.99. Plus save an extra 40% off clearance. Sale ends Tuesday. Search our store locator for your nearest Gap Factory and Banana Republic Factory store or shop us online. 